welcome back to another video so today is going to be a little bit different as you can already tell by this intro but also this pile of fabric beside me because today we're not going to be sewing for Izzy instead we're going to be sewing for me because why not so the whole video is going to be laid out a bit differently I will be showing my process as we go but for now I just want to show you the beautiful fabrics that I ended up getting so before I show you that, I should probably tell you, if you haven't gathered from the video title yet, what I'm going to be making. So I, like many other girls, growing up, I was obsessed with Barbie. And those dresses, oh, just a childhood dream was to have one of those dresses. Or, you know, the whole closet full, but we can't have all of it. And anyway, uh, that's of course a childhood dream. And as I was going through Pinterest, like I do, I came across the 12 dancing princesses and I just remembered how much I loved it and how beautiful it was and just everything. And fabric wise, if you haven't caught on yet, I am wanting to make Princess Genevieve from Barbie the 12 dancing princesses. So that is the dress that I'm going to be making. So this dress is basically a masterpiece. Okay, no. So, well, yes, but <laughs> back to what I'm saying. This dress consists of a puffy sleeve, dark pink, kind of like an undershirt, if I'm just gonna call it that, that has a white corset over the top uh, decorated with some gold embellishments as well as a pink flower in the center. And then as for the skirts, in her original design it is an ombre from a dark pink to a light pink. So I've been trying to figure out how to do this. I've been going through so many scenes of her dancing, walking, trying to figure out how I can do this. And one thing that I determined really quickly was I don't want to do any dip dyeing. I just don't want to dye any fabric. It is really hard and not all fabric takes dye easily and doing a dip dye especially, I'm just not going to dive into that. <laughs> dive. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So how am I going to do this differently? I kind of figured that I could layer up the fabrics. So I wanted to do a light base skirt. So that is the fabric I have right here. So this is a really beautiful light pink silky fabric satin. That's the word I was looking for. This is a light pink satin that I got. So I figured I could do that base skirt in this light pink. And from there, we're gonna go into some tall layers. So this light pink is going to be first. Then I have the tall layers. It's bright, it's bright. But it's sheer as well. You can really see through it. So I am thinking doing a half circle skirt of this pink fabric, since it would cost me too much fabric to do a full circle skirt, but I will get to that later on. So I'm thinking a half circle skirt of this fabric. And then with this tool, I am going to create around three layers three or four layers, depending how much fabric I have and how much opacity it's gonna give me. So yeah, that is what I'm thinking of doing. And these three or four layers are going to be in different length layers. So let's say the first layer is going to be around the like thighs, then just above the knee, and then the next one like just below the knee. So I haven't figured it out yet, but that's what we're thinking. Well, what I'm thinking. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. But as you can see, that already gets more opaque here compared to there. But that's not the biggest problem if that is opaque or not, since we are going to be covering this. And to cover this, let me just put that on the side. We are going to be using some pink chiffon. And yeah, this was a little bit darker than I thought. So I did all online shopping on this one. Which was actually kind of fun and scary at the same time. I've never bought fabrics online before. But yeah, 
my store didn't have any of these fabrics, so online shopping it was. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely, let me find the end there, darker than I thought it would be. So even here, as so I'm just pulling one layer apart, it is dark. It is really, really dark. You can barely see through it. So this, my concern came in. Because if we are going to have this pink, and we're going to have this pink, and then suddenly we throw on top this, you don't see any of the other layers, except for hopefully a bit of a poof. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a concern, but I did order some white organza, and the white organza was going to be either laid in between here or as a base layer. And now I'm thinking that putting the layer of white organza between these light pink and the chiffon is going to be a very big help. So that's what we're going to be doing, adding the light, well, not the light pink, the white organza, one layer of that over the top of this, just to help break it up. And we'll see how it goes. I don't know yet, but this is what I'm thinking of doing and we're gonna go with it. So yes, so white organza we also have. And then the final fabric that I ended up getting from that store is this dark pink satin. So this dark pink satin, oh, isn't it the perfect shade? Tell me it's not the perfect Barbie shade. It's perfect. Okay, anyway, <laughs> this is going to be for her under top and poofy sleeves, as well as the skirt bits, um, like she has in the original dress design, has like the extra, like a small extra skirt layer, I don't know what you would call it, but like a little poofy skirt thing. So that's also going to be in this fabric. And it actually matches everything really well. Like every color just matches. A little bit dark, but I like the color. So we're gonna make it work, hopefully. The other fabric that I still had in my stash is this white fabric, just plain white. This is going to be for the corset. Nothing to it, just a cotton fabric. Um, I think there is some fabrics that would have been more suitable, um, which I may run into before sewing it, but most likely not, and I'll just end up using this cotton. It would have been really cool if I had some like details in there, but we're not gonna get into that. I can't get that fabric anyway. So this is what we've got. Now, I did get some additional things like this pink flower. Well, it's more like a white flower that's tinted slightly pink. I think it would have been nice if this was slightly more pink, but with all the pink in the dress and then the white hair, I think this is actually a really good mix to break it up. So we have the flower with the leaves that we're going to be using. And then we also have some ribbon. So I still had this gold ribbon in my stash, which is Actually, really nice thickness, although if I'm going to be adding this trim to the bottom, I'm gonna need it wider. So luckily I've got quite a bit, so I think I may just do it like two next to each other just to get it wider. Um, oh, here's like a loose piece. So yeah, putting them like this to get a little bit, a bit, little bit wider. I also have a narrow trim. I don't have that much of this, but it just can give that nice finishing detail where needed, maybe at the sleeves, since we have the poof and then the straight bit. We'll figure that out when we get to it. So I do have that. And then I did go out and get some cording, like, I don't know what you would call this, but it's like a cording in gold. And this is going to be like the little detailing on the corset, which, is going to give that finishing touch. And some light pink lacing on the back of that white corset. And I did go through a lot of frames trying to figure out which color is used to lace up the corset. And I determined that it was a light pink. So that is what I ended up getting. And I'm actually really excited about this. There's so much pink, so much pink. And then of course, two colored thread light pink for the underskirts and whatever details I want to do and then the dark pink for all the other layers so that's 
all that I've gathered here and now it's time to get on with the project. Bye! So I've just been working on putting together a base for the bodice as well as figuring out the skirt. Uh, before I continue, as for the skirt here, I just have a half circle skirt. I was just trying to figure out how much fabric I would need. And just by looking at this, I really wanted more volume. So we're going to ignore the half circle. And we're just going to make sure to order enough fabric so I can do a full circle skirt. And anyway, we're going back to the bodice now. So I am working from a pattern. This is the pattern that I'm working from. It is a simplicity pattern and I have made this corset previously before I started the whole YouTube channel thing and I absolutely love it. It is very comfortable but I did notice a few things. So I made that one without doing a little twirl first so I just went straight for it and one thing that I really noticed was that I had too much space around my bust. So this bit here was just really loose on me. So this time around, I am just shaping that a little bit more. And I'm actually thinking, because if you look at her dress, I'm actually thinking I might take this up a little bit further to complete the cup just higher up, as well as to give it a little bit, little bit more of a sweetheart. Not much of a sweetheart, but just a little bit more because this is really low cut. And then the pink dress will come to about here. So yeah, if we've got a bit more room, that would really make it work better. The other thing that I need to change is the fact that we have a point here, which is a great start, but we need this to be rounded. And now we have another rounded bit there. So that is something that I'm going to be figuring out. And I will most likely just pin some fabric in place and maybe sew it just to work from. And then we can get the swirly, swoopy things going that the bodice actually needs. So this is what we're currently at. I have added a little bit there just for the height. This is where the seam allowance will need to be added on. So these will be attached. That is just gonna continue with the curve. When I'm patterning this, I just need to make sure that these curves get smoothed out because at the moment it is a little bit blocky, but it doesn't matter for now. Other than that, I am just trying to figure out how we are going to do like the swoopy bits and how many we need to do. It seems that in her dress, of course there's no center seam, so we're going to be removing the center seam. I've just made a little adjustment there. So I've pinned that in place and I've marked it so I know to transfer to the pattern. And that is just how we're going to end up doing this to remove my center seam. The center seam is because the original corset pattern, this is the one that I end up making. And this one here has these closures in the front, which I love. And this corset I'm still going to be using, so yeah. This is going to stay where it is for the time being. The inside, by the way. So yeah, because this corset has like this closure, it has a facing as well as the center seam. But we don't need that center seam. We don't need this corset at all at the moment. So that is the adjustment that I've made, including this. If I just take that pin out, just a teeny, teeny, tiny thing there. I folded that over and this is done mostly because like folding it over this way, I can at least get it straight. So without having the center seam, I looked at the reference pictures and it seems that the piping goes along the seam, like along her bust. And then I'm actually a little bit confused because it doesn't look like she has this seam, but I'm going to keep it anyway. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just having to layer a piece of fabric underneath so I can just mark where I want the swoop beam, which I'm going to be doing soon. And then I'm going to be figuring out because we need one on the center back. And then I'm not sure, but it looks like it is one on the sides. So one in the center, one on each side, and then 
one that's just like the center that matches in the back. So that was a lot quicker for me to check back in than I had expected, but I just have a little, little something. So when looking at reference photos for her dress, hers go from the piping and then like the little flounce there or whatever you want to call this. And then she has a wider curve on the side before going onto the back. I just, I feel like if I go from here to here, that is like the whole waist one. That feels so big. So I'm wondering if I should go from this bit here and make the curve on both sides and just, well, not have it as accurate as I'd like it to be. Well, this whole dress is not going to be accurate, but the whole bodice piece is, yeah. So that's my whole debate. I think what I'm going to do though is just make it this point first before going on and doing like a narrow one again for the back because in the movie hers is wider on the hips mostly because they're hips so that would explain but I will have a look how that turns out and decide if I want to keep it or not. So I've added the fabric to the bottom pieces and these lines are just where the seam will continue and this is actually looking really good. So here you can see my adjusted changes from the original pattern to the new pattern. And this is what it's looking like with all my changes with the second twelve. And honestly, I'm in love. I love it. And I want this for everything. The only small change that I still want to adjust is just on the side here. There is a lot of extra room, which comes in handy if you have like a lot of skirt volume. Uh, so we'll debate on that. But I am thinking that this little bit here naturally overlaps anyway. So, and this still gives you like enough of that little flare for your skirts. So I'm thinking of just adjusting this seam here to lay there and then smoothing this out. But other than that, this is mainly what it will look like with a whole lot of skirt flounces. And of course we have our top that comes around here, the poof sleeve and then the rest of the sleeve there. And we're back with another pattern. So I've just taken a basic sleeve pattern, which is from a commercial pattern in case you wanted to know, but it's just a basic pattern. And I've gone ahead and traced that on pattern paper and as you can see, I've also divided those into six parts. And this is essential. I've cut it all the way through because we're going to make a puff sleeve. So the plan is to separate these evenly on some more pattern paper. And now we're going to draw out a new pattern, extending it up the top there, slightly at the bottom, and also making sure that these little gaps are evenly spaced to keep the correct shape. And that is what we're going to be doing now. And this is the new sleeve pattern. So I've just finished cutting out the pattern pieces for the bodice and this is really just the under layer like with the pink puffy sleeves and then I also have this in white cotton that I mentioned before to attach to the puffy sleeve for the fitted, the fitted part of the sleeve. So the next plan is we're gonna take this apart and I'm going to start by sewing the shoulder seams together as well as the side seams and as you can see by the pattern this is really wide this is because i wanted this to be loose fitting so i don't have to worry about a closure as well as it just looking a little bit nicer hopefully underneath the corset since loose fitting is 
a tendency under those kind of things because the corset is tight fitting. So that's the plan. Check-in time! So this is what the top is looking like and I love it and I just need a top this flowy in my life because this is satisfying. So I do still have the corset here underneath and this is the length that I ha have it to and same on the back, we just turn that around. The corset is still underneath so there is like a good little gap between that. So this is it, this is the base done. All we got to do now is add the sleeves and of course we're gonna do the neckline. So I am going to do the sleeves first, gather them, puff them up, attach the bottom sleeve, add like the gold trimming and the things as well as on here and we'll get to doing that. So after all of that, we have attached the sleeves and I'm very happy with how it's going so far. I also added a gold trim around the top here and a narrow gold trim at the bottom. And then some white organza around the bottom just to finish it off nicely. And also that little uh, fluff that she has. I think if I had the pink organza, I may have done this in the pink. But the white is actually really nice as well. It just gives it a nice finish. And as you can see, it is rounded there because that's also how Harris is. I could have rounded this more, but I kind of like it the way it is. Subtle. So this poof does sit a little bit higher when worn. So you have more poof here. If I were to do this again, I would uh, put some interfacing into the shoulders here just to keep its structure a bit more since this is really thin fabric but at the same time i kind of like it since this sits here anyway so you can just get the poof to lay however you want it because you know it does actually stay where you want it to kind of but yeah some interfacing would work very well the other change i have made is around the back here. I did decide to add a center seam and this is more because I left some extra space in the center back just in case and after trying it on several times I determined I could just tighten this a little bit more. I took out some fabric giving me a center back seam which is fine and this is mostly done because I wanted the neckline in the front to sit a bit higher and then this also pulls the shoulders up a bit more because they actually have a tendency to slide down. And that's a lot less now, but yeah. So that's just the other difference that we have. So I am going to wait with finishing off the neck until uh, I have the organza. And I wanna do the organza skirts before I cut out the organza leaves because I don't wanna accidentally use too much fabric and not have enough for the full skirt. So this will be finished a little bit later on. I will finish the hem here, uh, overlock it, and I'll fold it over once, I think. 
so yeah and then i am going to continue with the skirts i think yeah Okay, so I just forgot to film that, but I did cut out my three layers of tulle and I had some tulle left, so I decided to make a petticoat. So I have a few layers on here just with the tulle ruffled, just for my leftover bits and this is what it looks like. Hey guys, little awkward check-in. This is what we're at for the skirts. So I have my little pink petticoat that I just made. So it's got some extra tulle at the bottom, as you can see, just to give it some more body. And then over the top, the pink skirt, which is still a little bit creased. I need to go and iron that, but it gives it so much body, the little tulle skirt underneath, which is great since I don't have a hoop skirt so this actually just gives it exactly what it needs to and then of course we're gonna get the layered toe over the top then the white organza and then the chiffon so we'll have even more layers so yeah i'm pretty happy and i want to go dancing so after trying on the top a few times i found that it was actually going up above the skirts so I added my trial skirt onto the bottom and it is so much nicer. It also slightly pulls down the shirt, which is nice. Plus it actually takes away the scratchiness from the tall underskirts. So bonus. So for the hemming, I did decide to do a rolled over hem on the overlocker. And I'm so glad I did this. It gave it such a beautiful look, really finished, nice and everything. It just took so much time. Like too many skirt layers, honestly, but I got through it. So for the pink layer, I did decide to add some pink thread. I would have changed all four threads to pink, but I don't have that much pink, so just one thread. This is just the looper thread, which is the one we'll be seeing mostly. So I'm just changing my settings to where they should be for the rolled hem. And if you've got the same machine, this may come in handy. Otherwise, just Google and that we tell you what settings you need. 
Anyway, this is what it looks like on the pink. It is still a lot of white, but I did try to get it as pink as possible, so I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Okay, so now we have our two underlayers, this pink skirt, the white organza that lays over the top, and then finally the pink chiffon. But that's not all. We still need to make that little pink short flounce. So I'm just curving it for now in the front. I will also be curving it in the back and of course the other side. So I was working on the overskirt and I had just finished putting on this trim. And then I discovered something when looking at the reference photo. This little tiny overskirt, which is really nicely in the front, is also like this in the back. So it doesn't go fully around like this, it should be scrunched like that, well not scrunched, but it should be like two little, two little things, I don't know what you would call them, but like two little circles together. So I'm just gonna go cut out a new pattern and redo the trim and we'll get back to that. Okay, so one new pattern later, I get to do the trim all over again times two this time. Okay, so we're getting close to finishing off those little details. So I'm just gonna go make some leaves from the white organza and I'm just winging this. I mean, if you haven't gathered by now, that's how I do 90% of my sewing, I wing it. So I just have here a organza layered up four times since I want four of each leaf and just cutting it out into a random leaf shape. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Cutting. And I'm just going smaller each time. So I've got four different sizes. The biggest one there on the left and then going smaller. And the one I'm cutting now is the smallest of all. So I cut out my little pattern, like the petals that are gonna go on the front there. So I tried overlocking, which actually looks all right. I'm not very happy with how it looks. It also warps the shape quite a bit. And I'm really worried for how I'm gonna do this, which I always struggled with, which is the biggest one on this little one. So because this is actually like a little plastic feeling to it, like the organza, I figured I would try burning the edges. So I just have a little piece here, which I've already burned that little end off and it works really well. You just have to go a little bit slow and like watch how it plays. Because it actually does melt rather than burn, which is really nice. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the pet. So with my petals all done, I just pinned them in place where I wanted them to be and then stitch them down. So I did a basting stitch first before lining it with a gold trim and that just finished it off so nicely and just look these patches look so realistic to her costume at least. Right with that done up next is the corset and as you can see the corset has a really beautiful design and I spent days just days trying to figure out how to do this as I don't have an embroidery machine I couldn't find or purchase anything that looks anything similar to this and I don't want to spend the next lifetime hand embroidering this. And then a friend made a comment, why don't you just paint it? Oh, hold up, I have fabric paint! So another friend had gotten me these fabric paints which I used previously for Ursa Scarlet, the armor at least, so this just came in perfect condition, like it was just perfect. Except that... I think it was just a little bit too thick as I was like drawing these lines because it is a puffy fabric paint. Uh, and yeah, and this pink that I'm adding, I hated it. I was gonna add buttons over it anyway, but yeah, I just really hated this pink. Anyway, uh, so this idea I did keep, I just ended up redoing the same piece and painting it with a paintbrush instead of straight with the nozzle. And I'm also not doing as many colors on there so i am keeping the pink and then a slight mix of that blue with white because it's it's a bit too vibrant 
But yeah, so I did end up doing something similar to this, just slightly different. And now I get to construct the corset all over again. But this time I took the back pieces from my practice one just to give it some more sturdiness and strength so I can add that grommets. And I'm really sorry I'm not a professional at setting grommets so <clears throat> they are a little bit broken and not looking very nice but hey, we don't care about that, right? We don't see stuff like that, do we? Anyway, this is what we're looking like so far so I just need to add some finishing touches. Uh, the problem at the back we're having here is that I don't have enough boning. That's the main issue. I did end up finding a little bit more boning, so I added two diagonals from the tip there to the side, just to make sure that it stayed up. As for these buttons on the front, I just bought a pair that had the correct shape and look to it, and just painted them. So with the paint that I had from a fabric paint, it gave it the perfect look, which I'm so proud of. And then I cut the backing off and hot glued them on, just like the flower. If you like this video, like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And while you're at it, comment down below on parts that you really liked or if you want some clarification, feel free to ask that below as well. So I really had fun doing this, so if you like this as well, please let me know so I can do this in the future as well. Well, I'll see you all next time. Bye!